What's up everyone, Howard Kingston here, entrepreneur, marketer, and co-founder of Growth Velocity Academy. In this episode, how to create a world-class brand that gets noticed and makes you proud. Well, one of the smartest brand people I've ever met is actually my girlfriend. Uh, Steffi launched her business a few years ago and uh, a vegan food business when vegan food wasn't really a thing and she spent loads of time really kind of getting the visual right and getting the positioning right and really getting known kind of having a unique position in the market and visually it was beautiful she just has an eye for good branding and I really saw the impact of that because very soon um, even though she was launching into like a very busy market like London, right? She was uh, she was launching into the London market. Um, still, there wasn't that many food brands around. And very soon, her brand got got known for fresh, good quality vegan food, and she started getting emails. I remember her telling me one day that she got an email out of the blue into her inbox from Harrods. Now, you've probably heard of Harrods. It's one of the most famous stores in the world, and it's probably one of the most premium stores in the world, and certainly in London. And it's kind of nice when world-class brands are emailing you saying, hey, we've heard about you. Uh, can, we can we please stock your product? So that's the power of having an early brand, especially when you're just launching. You know, you can get kind of get positioned in someone's mind around a certain product. And that's what I want to talk about in this episode. <laughs> And a common mistake I see, guys, is that branding has to take a long time. You know, I see people spend months. It's probably the most common thing I talk to, I hear, actually, when I talk to early stage startups that we say, oh, I'm not ready to market my business yet. I'm still working on the website or the branding or stuff like that. And I think that's a common mistake. Don't get me wrong. We want your, your brand to look good, but you, you, you don't want to waste too much time on it because don't forget... You want to be getting out there and selling your product um, ASAP. And I have other episodes. Do check it out where I talk about how to launch a business proper, uh, how to launch a business effectively. And I talk more about how to launch it before you're ready in that episode. So I'm not going to spend too much time on that here, but do check that one out. I'll leave a link to it in the show notes, right? So. Let's talk three top tips for launching a world-class brand from scratch, even if you haven't done anything yet, all right? So tip number one is perfect your positioning. So imagine you walk into a room and, uh, you know, it's a networking event or something like that. And let's say there's some other entrepreneurs, there's some marketers, uh, maybe there's some investors, maybe there's even a few influencers in the room and you're kind of mingling and you walk up to somebody and you start chatting, you know, you're having some cake, some finger food or whatever they have going. After you introduce yourself and say, hey, my name is Howard or, or whatever it is, what's the first question you're almost guaranteed they're going to ask you? Think about that for a second. What's one of the first questions they're going to ask you? Yeah, the question is going to be, well, what do you do? And here's the thing. How do most people answer to that? Usually not very well. Usually something like, oh, I've, uh, you know, I've uh, a new company about blue or I'm a director or I'm an accountant or I'm a marketer, you know. And what happens then to the other person? The other person who's listening doesn't really know what to do. If anything, either they're confused, they don't actually understand what it is you've just said. You know, you might say, I've got a a, a new startup. It's a platform for um, buyers and sellers. Like, I've literally heard that multiple times, right? And you just don't know what to say, right? So the person, what do they do? Well, they're not rude. They're not going to walk away. They're not going to say, well, that's confusing. What are they going to do? To be polite, they're going to change the subject. So next thing they're going to say is like, oh, interesting. Um, good weather today. Or 
Where have you travelled from today? Or have you tried the cake at the networking event yet? Right? And guys, so I want to introduce something called a paradigm shift here. So hopefully you'll never be able to unhear these words. And here's the thing. You have failed if that happens. You have failed. Why have you failed? Because, guys, if you said something else more interesting, they would have responded differently. Right? If you said, oh, well, I've got a space startup and I'm, I'm wanting to go to the Mars, they're not going to say, have you tried the cake? Right? And I use an extreme example. I know you don't have a space startup, but if you do, amazing. But I use an extreme example to emphasize the point that if you choose different words, you'll get a different response from people. And this is both in networking events, but also on your website, also on your LinkedIn, etc. Also on your Instagram, right? So most people don't do that. Most people don't take responsibility of the words that they say or words that they write. And then they blame the other person. Oh, they weren't interesting. They didn't like, you know, they weren't inquisitive people. No, you didn't do your homework and you didn't put the effort into describing your product well. Okay, so you need to own it. Most people don't do that. So a bit of a wake up call, own your positioning. So how might you want to start to own your positioning? Well, there's a great format for a intro from a really smart dude I know called Clay Heber. And he created something called the perfect intro, which I'd really recommend you check out. And uh, it goes a little bit like this. I help blank with blank. Okay, and whenever I'm saying blank, I'll tell you what what goes in there. I help blank is the people that you help. So, for example, entrepreneurs, or if you're a a graphic designer for, you know, for large businesses, you might say, I help corporate businesses. All right. With blank. Blank is the key kind of thing you help them with. All right, or the key thing that you d- you give people. So um, I help entrepreneurs with their marketing might be an example of one. I help corporates with their branding if you're a graphic designer. See what I mean? So that's a very simple way that you can create you can answer that question and then it starts a conversation. okay? So I help blank with blank check that out. That's a great way to own your positioning. Tip number two, choose your brand. Okay, so what is a brand? One of the best definitions I've heard of this is three words, a desired perception. Okay, a desired perception. How do you want to be perceived? And one of the ways that you're going to be perceived is through the name. Now, Little known fact you might know not know about me is that I've had to rename my business multiple times. My businesses multiple times. All right. So I've made the mistakes here. So I'll I'll share some of the mistakes that you could make here so you don't need to. But also, guys, it's also a good lesson that I've had to change my my name of my businesses multiple times, even when they've had like raised, you know, millions of dollars of funding. So and it didn't hurt us that badly. So a lot of people at this stage, they overthink it. They really dwell on this brand brand name so long and they take ages thinking about it and they don't move forward. All right. So if it didn't work out too badly for me, even having to rename, it's not the end of the world if you need to too. I I just like to share that because hopefully that will take the pressure off a little bit of having to think of the perfect brand name. And guess what, guys? Like a lot of brand names that launch don't mean anything, right? Some people think they have to come up with the smartest thing ever. Um, But the reality is, think of Google. What does Google mean? Of course, now it means something. But when they launched, it didn't make it mean anything. Or Bing, right? So a lot of businesses, uh, you know, do think come up with names that either don't mean that much and are kind of nice and short, for example, uh, or come up with something that is, you know, kind of means something to you. I don't mind, but don't worry too much because 
even if you do have to change it in the future, it's not the end of the world, all right? So for example, my business used to be called, my advertising business uh, used to be called Future Ad Labs. That's how we started the business. I remember really liking that name for a long time. Um, but then we needed to change the name. There was a copyright, a trademark infringement, and we needed to change it. It was really annoying. Got this letter from uh, San Francisco. There's a company called Future Ads. Didn't know about that. And uh, they, our legal team advised us that they'd sue us unless we changed the name. So we changed the name. And we changed it to, uh, we changed it to a name called Ad Ludio. Ad Ludio. And I found out that name because I wanted the word ad in there because it was an advertising business. And ad ludio is a Latin word for to play. And that just worked out really. I thought that was smart and I liked it. Anyway, cut a long story short, guys. Don't worry about it too much. Even Uber changed their name. It used to be called Uber Cab. Instagram used to be called Bourbon. Like there's so many examples of businesses that change their names. So just pick something. But when you are picking something, I do want to give you a little bit of a tip of some things maybe uh, to do or not to do. So one, make it a like a likable word, not not word that kind of makes you a little scared or worried. Okay, make it uh, memorable. All right, something that's easy to remember. And this is a really big one. Make it easy to spell. I have a friend who launched a agency and it was a content agency and I literally cannot remember how, every time I try and Google it and he's my friend. So I spent like, I, I, I really try hard, harder than I would with any other business to find it online, but I can never remember the spelling. So don't make it, too, you, you might try, think that you're being very smart with this, some w weird spelling, but if it's gonna get be difficult for people to remember or for you to describe to people, because don't forget, people are going to say, oh, what's the what's the domain name? Or how do you spell that? And you want to make it easy, okay? So p tip number two is choose your brand. But don't take too long, all right? Don't take too long. And then tip number three is get visual and go online, all right? So again, remember I said in the last tip, I said, what is a brand? And a brand is a desired perception. Well... Things are perceived by the name, but also how people see things, all right, and how it makes them feel. And humans are visual people, right? So what we want to do is we want to think of how we want our brand to visually take form. And when I'm thinking about that, the first thing I'll do before I start jumping onto a logo, right? So what you shouldn't do is just open up a logo and I'll talk about how to create a logo in a second, but don't go there yet. Just pause, just wait, you know, give yourself like, you know, 30 minutes, it's okay. And I want you to answer a couple of questions. And a good brand should have a bit of a personality. Okay, you might've heard of the term brand personality. And I want you to answer the following questions. One, if your brand was a person, how would you describe them? Okay, and start jotting down some of the names, some of the words here. So you might say strong, you might say independent, you might say creative, you might say um, funny, right? So all of a sudden now you're gonna start creating a personality around this, this person. What colors? bring to mind with your brand. You might say red, blue. Don't forget there's are some there is some science and psychology around colors. So I'll, I'll link in the notes uh, a great article on what different colors kind of mean to different people. Uh, like blue is usually safe. Orange is exciting and vibrant and things like that, right? So just bear those in mind. And then the third question is what if your brand was a superhero, what superhero would it be? And I think that's a really nice way for you to kind of almost visualize your, what your brand would be like. Would it be Superman? Would it be James Bond? Would it be Wonder Woman? Would it be um, would it be one of the X-Men? You know, so this is a way, again, it's a, sometimes an easier way to think about the personality and describe. And then when you describe what superhero it is, then you can start describing what that superhero, what are the qualities of that superhero. And that makes it easier when you're then moving to the actually creating a, a, a visual design. And on that point, guys, the visual design, 
once you've got those questions done, don't overdo, don't spend too much time on, on creating the perfect logo at the start because I guarantee you it probably will change, you know, over time. I almost guarantee it. But here are some ways if you do want to get started. And I'll give you one or two options. One is use Canva. Canva.com has some logo templates built into it, which you can just like upload, change, change the word, change the name, and voila, in five minutes you've got a logo. So if you're just really wanting to get started fast, start there. Or if you're wanting to get something a little bit more professional, I really like 99designs. It's a different way that you can kind of put a, a, a brief up and lots of designers from around the world will send you your ideas. There's just two ideas how you can get started. Okay, so guys, what we've been sharing in this video, in this episode is how to create a brand. And I've talked about how you don't want to overthink it. No, you want to really just get started. But there's three top tips I would give you for starting a brand. One is perfect your positioning. I help blank with blank. Two, choose a name that is memorable and easy to spell and means something to you. And tip number three is get visual. Think about the personality of your brand and some easy ways to get started with a quick logo that won't cost you very much, okay? So guys, this is Howard Kingston at the Growth Velocity Show. Uh, I have some notes in the show notes, including a way to get a, get a download of the Growth Toolkit, where I share all my different tools and I have a lot of different branding tools in there. It's some different ways you can get some free logos, some ways that you can come up with uh, domain ideas so like how to pick the name of your website etc it's all in the growth toolkit so if you want to go a bit further do check it out it's in the show notes all right peace out and i'll see you on the next one